I want to spend a few minutes on the lying spirit. Now, don't y'all be talking about like y'all guilty, like, oh, man. Y'all would have had to show up tonight. <laughs> Amen. I want to talk about the lying spirit um, because uh, that is something that, that we can recognize easily. Uh, I'm sure all of us have been in a situation where we just knew that that individual or even ourselves or even ourselves, uh, was it lying or have lied and uh, things of that nature. And um, I think the, I believe the problem comes in where we convince ourselves that it's okay to lie. Uh, I, I, I like to take the stance of uh, making an effort not to lie so you don't have to uh, remember what you said. As long as you're telling the truth, uh, you should always be able to uh, say the same thing again. Say the same thing again. Uh, now, you may add to it because you have more information, but it just wouldn't be an outright lie. And so uh, lying is very, has been, still is, and will forever be very damaging. And it's something that even from a carnal sense is taken serious. That's why when you go to court, you uh, put your hand on the Bible. Left hand, right? Right hand on the Bible? Or is it raise your right hand? See, some of y'all ain't been to court. <laughs> right, they talking about right hand, right hand. You put your left hand on the Bible and you raise your right hand. And you swear to tell the what? No. Nothing. See, some of y'all know it too well. <laughs> I am so glad y'all ain't talking about past. I'm going to be in court Wednesday. Can you come and just stand as a character witness? So it's important to understand that we serve a God who never changed. He never changed. So you can stick with him because he's not going to change in the middle of the road. Just like some people, they have change on you in the middle of the road. They start off good, have great intentions, but then all of a sudden, they become a whole different person. They become your Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde. So there, and when one has two faces, uh, uh, a double-minded man in the gender neutral sense is unstable in all his ways. So therefore, if you're dealing with someone who has a spirit of lying on them, you can't expect stability. It's not gonna happen. You don't even know what's the truth or not. Because he, tell you, he or she will tell you one thing one day and do another the next day. Now, and that, that spirit can run deep. We hear about people that are living double lives double lives. They got a family down the road, they got a family up the road, family around the corner, and all the families believing that that's the daddy. They don't know that that's other people's daddy too. Dangerous. <laughs> so it's important to understand God, God uh, never lies. Now, scripture shows, scri scripture uh, shows conclusively that God always speak the truth. He's a, listen, he's a man that he cannot lie. He, he cannot. And then, look, I would go as far as to ask this question. Why would he lie? He's God. What, who, who, who do he need to lie to? What, what would he need to try to get out of? Okay, Second Chronicles 18 and 20. It says, then there came out a spirit, wow, and stood before the Lord. Man, do you, can you invent, see, see how, look at that. It just, that lets you know the spirit ain't nothing to play with when a spirit got to stand before the Lord. You just, you got to just take your time and read when you study your word. It said, there came out a spirit. It wasn't, it wasn't the Holy Spirit. How do you know that? Because it's the lowercase s. 
He said, and stood before the Lord. Now, how do you know that's the Lord Almighty? Because all his letters is capital. He said, and said, I will entice him. Wow. And the Lord said unto him, wherewith? Give me verse 21. It said, and he said, I will go out and be a what? Right there in your text. It ain't something that pastor's making up. I'm not just, you know, throwing something together. It's clear in the text that a lying spirit, he said, I will go out and entice him. And he said, I will go out, entice him. And the Lord said unto him, wherewith? And he said, I will go out and be a lying spirit. Mm. Now, then it says, uh, in the mouth, in the mouth of all his prophets. And the Lord said, thou shalt entice him and thou shalt also prevail. Go out and do even so. Okay, go to the next one, 22. He said, now therewith behold, the Lord hath put a lying spirit in the mouth of these thy prophets and the Lord has spoken uh, evil against thee. Boy, that's deep. I'm going to have to teach on that. Now, let me share something with you. Now, so Jesus gives us the source of all lies when he informed the Pharisees. John 8 chapter. Give me John 8 chapter. 8 chapter 44. When he, when, when he informed the Pharisees, he said, Ye are of your father, the devil. Y'all got that? Ye are of your father, the devil. And the lust of your father, ye will do. And you're going to do as your daddy do. If that's who, who you are embracing, an uh, evil spirit then you're going to do uh, as your daddy do. Now, it said, he was murder. He, he was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth. Meaning he was a what? He is a liar. Now, it said, because there is no truth in him. Now, so you can't believe anything of the devil cannot believe it. He, this is the thing about it. The devil is not going to show you truth. Because he's not trying to uh, have you to walk the straight and narrow. He's not. So everything he shows you, you know it's a lie when it comes from the enemy. Well, listen, why would you, knowing good well as an enemy, I don't care if the enemy say, look, I don't have nothing in my hand and I'm walking towards you. You can put your weapon down. Why would you put your weapon down knowing he got something right here? That just don't make sense to it. And I tell you this because that's how the enemy works. That's how the devil, that's how the father of lies work. You think you're looking at truth, but the truth of it is, he got something right here for you. You know what I'm saying? What you see is not what you're going to get. It's what you don't see is always what you get from them. And you don't see it until you are connected and you have bought in to what you think you saw. So the text, the text says, it says, he was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him. So no matter how you look at it, there is no truth when it comes to ungodliness. There is no truth when it comes to uncleanness. There is no truth when it comes to the devil. There is no truth when it comes to your, the enemy. There is no truth when it comes to the wicked. The, on, the only truth about them is they are what they are. It is what it is. And it's not changing. So, it says, when he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own. For he is a what? Right there. 
I was gonna say in black and white, but it's like blue and white. It's, oh, hold on. He says he is a liar and the father of it. Mm. Wow, wow. So, so, so when we look at this, we look at this. We got to understand uh, the 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 devil is a trickster. Now, now let me help you out. Let me help you out. I got I got to express this to you. Uh, uh, not everyone who lies uh, is possessed by a lying spirit. Now, I know that's hard to believe, but this is what it's saying. If you keep going down that road, then, yeah, then that would be your who you would couple up with. Okay? You know what I'm saying? Y'all got that? Y'all ain't got it. But each lie can be a step down the road to such a condition. Okay. You take your first little sip, little drink, and you're not no drunk. Yes, you got some alcohol on your breath. But if you keep drinking, and when drinking get out of control, guess what? You're going to be a drunk. <laughs> so uh, backbiting, false prophets and teachers, false prophets and teachers, Y'all hear that false? Don't, listen, don't let nobody speak something into your life and you, and you know it's a lie. You better be bold enough to tell them the devil is a lie. You know, go to say, listen, especially there's some things that I, I just believe that God is going to tell me first. And then you, you'll be confirmation, you know. That's just how I, be, how I believe. And so uh, there's some things you just have to tell people, well, I'll just wait till God show me. When God tell me, that's when I'll move on it. Why would you do anything different? Why would you move on uh, uh, Minister Frank just because he told you that this, this, and that? God wants you to do this. But he ain't told you. God ain't even mentioned it to you at all. He ain't, you haven't seen it in a vision. You haven't seen it in a dream. He haven't spoken at a red light, a green light. Yellow light, he haven't spoken at no light. He haven't spoken at all in your life, and all of a sudden he come out of clear blue and say, God wants you to do this. So, so not only that, uh, strong delusions or deception, and then, of course, just a lie. So, so when we look at it, when we look at the text tonight, uh, really the bottom line is, in all of this, God's spirit always speaks in line with his word. God's spirit always speaks in line with his word. God's spirit is never going to contradict God's word. So, well, Pastor, so you're saying that's one way to check it? Absolutely. Absolutely. And if his word is said different, then you need to... Uh, get on your knees and ask for clarification because maybe you're confused and messed up. And some people have just ran off with the wrong understanding of life's mission and now they're confused and messed up. God hasn't called everybody. Some people, uh, he, they think that they were called to, to minister the word of God from a uh, a prophetic evangelist standpoint and so on and so forth and really God was just calling them to live right. But they didn't they didn't get the clear message. So they just assumed that since the word the spirit of God was speaking strong in their life that they supposed to be doing one thing and they done ran off and did a whole nother. And then they struggled. There will never be a prophecy from God that can contradicts the written word of God as well. It's never going to be a prophecy. God says fire next time in the scripture. He, okay, so the, when he comes the next time, uh, you know, flood the first time, fire next time, it's not going to be something different other than fire. Why you think theologians and people that study their Bible, they get so concerned about, you know, nuclear this and nuclear that? Y 
y'all, y'all getting a little scared on me tonight. Y'all never thought about that? And we, we playing with stuff that we have no business playing with. So, secondly, God's prophets are always 100%. If it's prophecy from God, it's 100%. Can't miss. Can't miss. It's from God. But if they prophet lying, now, that, now that word lying stick out even more so now after tonight's message. If they prophet lying, you would be like, you know, it make you do, it make you really want to ask them. You know? So, it's prophecy, prophecy is 100% correct in their prophecies. Third, thirdly, God's prophecies always glorify and uplift the name of God. Not, not the human, not the individual uh, that, that, is used, that is used or the one that's getting it. It always going to uplift God. The prophecy is always, it's uplifting uh, God. God is always going to get the glory. You need to run when you're around a prophet that's uplifting themselves. You need to run. Or putting you up on a, on a pedestal. You need to run because you already know that it's, he's prophet lying. So now, so unless the prophet and the prophecy meet those requirements, lining up with the word, lining up with the spirit of God, then really what you see is the lying spirit at work. At work. 